That's <laughs> okay. You are, we're we're good. We'll take it. Yeah, that's, we'll, we'll 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 take it. No, that was that was. Say no more. <laughs> Say no more. Unexpected. Uh, uh, Dennis, have you have you fished lately? Yes, yes. I believe I sent you some shots. I. Uh, you know, I told you the story probably even last episode about the fish that swam toward the toward the uh, 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 the freaking uh, brush and the sticks and the trees and the river yeah. and and yeah and I and I got him in. Well, the other day I went up and it was it was going to push sixty five degrees. Ooh. There was still some snow on, on the ground, and the river was a little deeper, but not much. And I went in in the bright sunlight. I saw a few fish, and for the next three and a half hours, I caught five little 12-inch fish. You know, I call shakers. Yeah. You get them on, you just shake them yeah. off. But I take a picture. They're gorgeous. They're really gorgeous. I mean, it's 11 inches is a good size for a little one, so it fills your hand easy enough. Yeah. And the colors of the of the brown trout and the rainbow is what I caught, and it was kind of fun. Yeah. You know, they hit the little eggs, they ran up and down the stream, and I reeled them in, no net, blah blah blah. Took a picture, whatever, or didn't take a picture no most net. of the time. And no, I had a net, well. and uh, 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 so I thought, well, it's one thirty. I've been here for quite a while, or two hours up, two hours back. I'd fish at least four hours. No hurry. Even I'm going to go back to the holes I fished already, but I'm going to change all my gear. And fish with different flies and different lines and try a couple different things, which I did. And just as I decided that, the sun disappeared behind a cloud cover. Oh, no. That turned everything gray and cloudy. And, and in the what warmth. The, what the, what the cloud? Almost, almost mushy, almost, uh, you know, humid. Um, but no, But no bright sun. All of a sudden, in a hole that I had fished that I hadn't caught, any fish previously, and the next hour, I hooked at least seven fish. Whoa. Including two steelhead, one of which I played up into the bank, away from the bank, away from the sticks, got him on, got him on, got him on. He comes toward me, spins around and runs in the other direction. So a loose line and then a snap. Yes. And he's gone. Now, I got on uh, of, of, of one... Uh, one fly, I think. Seven and, um, fish per hour. F F P H. Well, it, although average out from nine o'clock, that was one thirty. <laughs> so from nine to one thirty, nothing of, of any size. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost the steelhead, uh, a couple of them. And then I had some on that I think I might have hooked pulling up, uh, but they were there. They're on. Zoom, 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 and then break. Zoom or, or loose. Zoom, 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 zoom. zoom, 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 zoom. And then I, I hooked into a, a fish that I thought, oh, this is a small steely. And in fact, it was a, what I would call a fairly large brown, which was 16 inches. I sent you a picture of that. That's about yay big. Large brown. Real pretty yeah. fish. If you bring a close-up of that so that all you see is the color on the skin yeah. and that's it, it you, you print that and, and hang it somewhere and no one will I, I ever have. figure out what the fuck it is. Oh, you have. Yes, it's it's uh, it's my wallpaper, for. Really, yeah. it's fish scales. Yeah, it's entirely. <laughs> it's 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 not weird enough that it could be true, because it's you who's talking. Well, I mean, but objectively, it's... that's a little weird. But look. I, I love my I love my scales. Uh, uh, it's off the scales, actually. I, it, it's scale where you reside. Yes. So here's the story. Here's the story. Finally, I catch that 16 inch uh, brown, which I showed you a picture of. I fish another another little while, and I I put on another fly because I'm going to move upstream a little bit, and then I think so. Now I got two flies. I got a fly at the end of my line, and then I drop a, I tie a little line onto that. Eight inches long, I tie another tiny fly on it, Do, and I started to go up straight. I have a question. Yep. When, when fishermen are are there in the stream, do they ever say, uh, "Hey, 
your flash down. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, no. I had this is no shit. You know those uh, those uh, those those fucking uh, mounted bass. Fucking mounted bass. They're on a plaque, yeah. and you push a button, and they sing at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they even turn their head, and they sing Mac the Knife or whatever. Well, just like that, one of those steelhead came out of the water and said real fast, your fly's down, and then he jumped back in the water. So it's funny um, that you should say I'm that. I'm just saying, it, like, that seems... It happened. Of course, I hadn't had any water, and I was feeling a little delirious at the time. But anyway, well, I decided to say, so, well, I'll, I'll throw this extra fly in there, you know, this with the other fly. fly. And I ended up hooking another uh, steelhead. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, Anyway... Zoom. Did it, tried, 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 went upstream, went to my honey hole where, you know, the whole story, all the pictures. Honey hole. Me. Fish, fish, I fish, honey hole, fish, nothing, nothing, nothing. Change up a little bit and say, well, I've got one big hole left, the one where I caught the big the fish. The last hole. And so I'm going to I'm gonna try that. I'm going to go home. It's, it's you know. It's, it's late. 3.30. It's late. I've been fishing since 9.30. So I trope up the stream, get to this cottage where this nasty man lives and where there's usually one or two fish, and I look at the stream, in eight inches of water, there's eight. Eight steelhead that are 25, 30 inches long, eight, nine, ten pounds. Damn. Right where you can see them stacked up. I fished, spooked them, fish, fish, fish. I walk upstream, there's four more. Between those two holes, I hook three steelhead, on and off, you know, on and up to say I played it, but quick, quicker than I like. Broken, and you know, I, by that time I had tied on a, a fucking. Uh, uh, I think I went with a four pound test, but four pound test, two flies. Fine. But anyway, I broke that off, and I said, "All right, well, these fish are too shallow." I went down. I saw this other one in the water. Threw in twice, hooked him. He jumped out of the fucking water, ran against the shore, right into the logs, and broke off. Yeah. I'm like, all right, he didn't come back. So I go to my last hole, and I look, and under this hole. deep, dark, black water, there is above it, uh, behind it, a shaded uh, evergreen tree with branches that cover over the water, which further shades the area, right. which is already deep enough to be dark. And I see right underneath that tree where that dark part ends, and instead there's gravel. There's two 30-inch male steelhead with a female steelhead Ooh. in between her spawning shaking spawning. the gravel and making dust sexy and i thought well i don't want to catch her but i want to catch them and i drifted through and after about the third drift very wait 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 wait, 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 wait. It. why are you so anti uh because they're spawning and they're going to lay eggs and i want them to do that okay I want them to do all their spawning because that's propagation. Okay, fine. I, I just so thought, here's the I, other I just thing. thought because you were, it's you were sexist there for a moment. Because it's laying eggs? Well, I mean, that's... Because it's laying eggs? Listen, that's, that's what, because it's that's laying what eggs, do, man. The, brown trout, the brown trout hang on right behind that nest, yeah. what is called a nest, because they're nesting, they're, they're spawning. Sure. They hang behind that nest, right behind them, two, three of them, they're about yay big, 16, even 18 inches. Those brown trout, when they open their mouth and breathe in the water, you can see the white of the inside of their mouth. And what they do is they feed on the eggs <laughs> that are coming, dropping out of the nest. So if you fly, if you drift an egg at that part where that brown trout is, that's how you catch the brown trout. Huh. And, uh, and anyway, um, so I go to this hole and I see this fish. And I drift in, I drift in. It looks like a, drift in, a drift hook out. is near its head. It's about to move. And I set the hook and I get him. Yeah. And he goes down in the deep water and he's going, oh, God, I got him. And then he broke off. Ugh. And and I said, all right. So I got out. I went to cast. I got it tangled up in a tree behind me. Pulled the tree down, untangled it fine. Had you to pulled the tree down? Pulled the tree, the branches down lower so I could okay. unhook all the shit all tangled up, which I recovered all day. Six, maybe eight times. 
getting stuff out of trees. Nice. I think I did it twice in a row. Was ready to give up and say, you know, I'm going to throw a new fly on, a new drop fly, they call it. Yeah. And I'm going to try this drop again. It's time to go home. It's time to go home. I don't want to walk away and then say, oh, maybe I should have done that. I do want to do it. Yeah. So I tied it on, drifted in the hole where the where the fish that I had hooked moved to because he said, fuck that, I'm going to go hide. <laughs> Went in the deepest water. Of course. Right? I got to the bottom of that hole with my fly drifting by, and I noticed, of course, imperceptibly almost, that the line stopped drifting. Oh. The reason the line stopped drifting... Ooh was because the fish breathed in the fly and stopped the line, and if I set the hook, that's how I'm going to catch a fish. They don't strike it. They don't like rah, go after it like a bass and jump out of the water okay. trying to get it. They breathe it in, and, they, and the shit, if it's a stone, they breathe it out. If it's a piece of shit, they breathe it out. It's good to breathe it in. Unlike you couldn't do it if you were a fish because you're all fucking clogged no. up. It's pretty obvious. But anyway, there's yeah. the fish. So, Eric, yes, I got this fish on, and he is a beast, and he's in that deep hole, and I'm going back and forth yeah, with baby. him, back and forth, back and forth, and then he goes near the tree that's like almost in the water, jumps out oh. of the water, oh. and I realize that it's probably the biggest steelhead I've ever hooked into. Yes. Landed in the water and went like crazy toward the trees. And luckily I had the drag set right. So zzz, 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 zzz. went toward the trees, brought him in. Went toward the trees, brought him in. Went in the deep hole. Back and forth, back and forth. Went toward the trees, brought him in. Back and forth. I'm going to tire it out the motherfucker. Yeah. Try to, try to, try it out. Or he's going to tire you up. out, motherfucker. I get, yeah, watch what happens. I get, I, I get to the point. I get to the point when I'm just in front of the hole where the deep water is right there. Right there by the and hole. And I've got a pole in my left arm above my head. Oh, no. The pole's, ni- the pole's nine feet long. Yeah. At the tip of the pole, there's nine feet of leader. From that, there's a weight, and then there's four feet of leader. So now we're looking 13 feet long, and then at the bottom of that fly, another half a foot, almost 14 foot of line. So when my pole is in the air there's 14 feet of line with a fish on it and i couldn't get it near the net i wasn't strong enough to pull it back i get it i think i get it and i realize i got it i got it instead of just the fly line reeling in i got to reel in the leader which is a different kind of line and a little frightening to to, to reel it in which Jeez. i did and at one point i've got this net at the jaw of the biggest steel that I've ever caught, and the net is kind of bouncing out of the front of his jaw. He's tired as shit. I just are can't you. get it. I can't get it. So I I get the net out of the way. I'm holding him taut. This fish decides that my legs represent shelter, and he darts in between my legs, which is above the knee deep in water, yes. takes the front of my pole and my line taut down in between my legs, Ooh. and that fish is stuck there, line, fish, pole, in between my legs. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm going to lose this fish. He's all tangled up. And I did a, 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 a pirouette. And lifted my one leg over the line in the pole, got myself square with the fish, and the fish went downstream like a bat out of hell, right toward the fucking logs. I said, oh, my God, I can't control him. He's gone crazy. And I said, fuck it, I'm coming at you. So I reeled in and started running toward the fish. Was able, because I was running toward him and reeling in very fast, keeping the line taut, that I could pull him away from the sticks into a current... That was fast, but only about knee deep, and I knew it well, and I knew I could run it, and I ran like holy hell with reeling in, getting close to the fish, knowing that up ahead was a place I could land the fish because it was shallow. This fish is going to be tired. 
got it up, I swear to God, got him in, got him close, got him in, couldn't get him. He went under my motherfucking legs again. Yeah. I pirouetted again. And by this time, I said, fuck this, I got to get him. I cranked all the way in so that all that was left was that real light four foot of line. Sure. And the bottom one. And I knew that that fly I had tied on had hooked him exactly in the jaw. And as it turns out, there's more to the netting, but as it turns out, that hook was in his bone of his jaw all the way through it that in order to get it out... I had to take a pair of hemostats and straighten out the hook and pull it out. It was like a dentist drilling a hole in bone and inserting a hook and then bending the hook. There was no way, but it was only on this four-pound test. And it was a a, a 10-pound fish. But here, back to the netting, I crank in that line, and every time where the tie is between the fly line and the leader, there's a knot, and it clicks on the guide of your pole. Click, click, click. There's like, you know, several of them. Okay. Five of them. And then I got it close enough where, and and remember, when the fish was under my legs both times, I got the fish from the tail inward under my legs into the net. But he was so big that his heavy fucking lopsided head... And the upper part of his body was no way going to get controlled by the back of his body. So I, but I had him, you know, like halfway netted. And so this time I got it, got it. And the fish was like exhausted, but still ready to run. I'm sure. Got it, got it, got it. And finally got it under his head and plunged. Put my pole in the crutch of my hand and netted two handed and got him up. This motherfucker was so heavy, and I was so tired that when I stumbled over to the bank through the water to throw him up on the bank to hook him and get the get the picture, I couldn't throw him up on the bank the first time. Wow! It was too fucking heavy. I said, "Oh God! Oh no!" You know, and then out, and then he bounced out of the net. But the picture I sent you of him—if you look in his head—you'll see the bright orange fly, and if you look closely, you'll see how it's as I said. Embedded. Uh, so, a quick picture and uh, resuscitation. He was frisky and uh, lived to fight frisky. another day and didn't didn't have a mark on him except for his fucking jaw. Damn, that uh, biggest I ever caught. Thirty inches. That's a story. Um, Ten pounds. I I had caught the biggest steelhead ever. The week before, I told you the story. And if you had said to me, hey, how would you feel if it turns out that that's the biggest steelhead you ever caught? I said, oh, man, it suits me. It suits me. That's a big steelhead. Oh, yeah? I beat my own record. Well, beat how would record. you feel if I told you that, like, this next week you're going to even do better? What would you think? Well, here's the truth of the matter. I don't want the truth. Two things. I want the story. Oh, the story is this. If the temperature of the water warms up, it should shallow over the next four days. Yes. And because and because it needs a little rain to get some depth yep. and some color, we're having both between now and Monday. And I'm meeting my nice. uh, old but new buddy to uh, old but new. fish the, uh, the PM, the Pierre Marquette, the fly-only zone, and the fish should be running. By the afternoon, Eric, there were... 25 or 30 more fish in this stretch of river Wow! because the water had warmed up and they swam up from the lake in a matter of hours. They're so fucking big. Nice. So big. You could hold on to their tail and bring you through the water like, you know, like fucking, uh, you know, a, a, you know, like a shark cartoon or something. You know, where like what? You're like, you know, hanging out of the tail of the fish is taking you through the water. There's like this, you there's know. this big man. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. So next week we will not be having a call because, well, boy, I'm tempted. To actually try and do a, from Greece? a call from Prague. The, the Czech Republic. Well, that's when? 13th? That's next week, yeah. Uh, 
13th. Yeah, and uh, it... So... <clears throat> So my my company was like, hey, let's all have a have a company like get together in Prague. Uh, we will fly you out on Monday and fly you fly you in on Monday and fly you out on Friday. So I guess that's really only three days of of uh, being four nights, together. three days. Uh, and so I was like, well. That seems dumb to go to a cool European city uh, only for that time. So I, I decided, I decided uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to I'm going to go for the weekend before and, uh-huh. and stay for even another day after. Uh, I'm going to fly uh-huh. back on the on the Saturday. Uh, so that was great until. Uh, two days ago, I got an email from Lufthansa saying that uh, our like luggage handlers are on strike, and so your flight is canceled. So I was gonna fly on on Friday, like in two days. Uh, and, oh no! And and they were like, no, your first flight is canceled. That's pretty quick turnaround and so I have been on the Jesus. phone with them uh, today and, and yesterday and today being like uh, so what else can I do and there's this I have this uh, I'm concerned that I like I've heard stories of uh, if you book a round trip ticket uh, and you don't get on the first flight, then the 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 return flight is is like they won't let they won't let you on. It's like it's canceled or whatever. Uh, and I don't know if that's how true that is. Because they're linked uh, somehow, yeah. But like, yeah, yeah. I because it's a it's it's a round trip ticket, right? Exactly. But so so I don't know. Like only my my first of four flights has been canceled. So. Uh, if I redo the first two flights, am I going to be able to have a return flight? I don't know. So, uh, anyway, I'm kind of uh, up in the air on, on that. Uh, no pun intended. And I will be... Uh, yeah, yeah. I have to reschedule shit, which sucks. But, uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to being in Prague. Uh, the... Prague. Prague. I'm going to Prague. I hope I see you upon my return. Let's meet at the library as usual. Yes, it is the, it is the, uh, the Republic of 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 Czech. They will Czech. So you know, back in the day, uh, the town of Makula uh, was in Poland, and then after invasions, it became uh, Czechoslovakia. Okay. And then, and I'm not clear. Where it sits now, whether in the Czech Republic uh, or in uh, is it Slovenia? I mean, or the, that is a place. Uh, Mokula. How do you spell that? M i k u l a. M i k u l a. That looks like it's in Romania. That's a little far afield. Well, I mean, it's the same general area: Slovakia, Hungary, R- Romania, yeah, right, Moldova. Right, right, right. Huh. Well, at any rate, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, but, uh, my my plan is to uh, visit there, and my God damn it, my fucking cat. Set your cat. Your cat's running all over the Jesus. fucking apartment. Sounds like it's running all over it, your guitars. It, it's running everywhere. Uh, so my my plan is to enjoy all the uh, food and whatnot that they have there. How else can you get there? That's it, right? No, I'm. I'm I mean, I'm. I'm gonna fly. It's just uh, not this particular airline. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Which, yeah. So, 
So, well, anyway, you got your money back, or you will. I mean... And, and the, the, the crazy thing is it's not even my money. It's like... It's because it's a it's a work trip. God damn it, cat. What the fuck? Uh, it's, uh, like, my my employer has told me, look, just just book another flight and we'll pay for that. Or whatever. Right. And it's just like... We'll work it out later. Yeah. It's like, okay... I guess I'll do that. Uh, so anyway, tomorrow that's my that's my primary mission. Well, that's going to be a blast, man. That is going to be and, a blast. And apparently, uh, the that's where they invented the the concept of pilsner beer. Ah. Uh huh. And uh huh. And my my wife uh, has been to Prague, like. 20 years ago and the only thing she remembers is how amazing the the dark beer was so uh, and, I but she, and the, so the Pilsner was dark no no, no well uh, no I think Pilsner is never dark but uh, right that's but, what I thought but. but they also like they have like three or four different beers that are like from there so, yeah, yeah, right, right. Uh, Including a dark, dark ale. So I will report back, and potentially I might be available uh, at this time to record. Uh, so we will, I will well, keep you. We'll play it by ear. It's on the calendar. I, I will keep you, I, you know, on the ear. So, keep me uh, keep me posted, so to speak. So, hey, yes. hey, 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 from the politics desk. Yes, Nikki. Listen, man, Super Tuesday, baby. It's over. And here's 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 the big headline. Super twos. Trump 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 wins, but in many states loses thirty percent or more of the vote. What? Joe Biden, on the other hand, only had two places in the entire Super Tuesday that he didn't have better than seventy percent. Trump had trouble. He only had in all of his wins. He never broke 70%, and he is running as an incumbent. This issue is large enough that guess who brings it up on Fox? None other than Karl Rove, who holds up a whiteboard and says, Movie. look at these states and these percentages, 23 in Virginia, that to 38, 45. She wins Rhode Island, or Vermont, I should say. She wins Vermont outright. And he says Trump needs to be concerned about these numbers. If these people don't vote for him, he won't win the presidency. And Biden's numbers, on the other hand, are, are, are much, much, much better. And guess what happens? Uh, I think it's tomorrow night, man. The State of the Union, where Biden sets out to prove himself a vigorous 81-year-old who's in command. Yes. And the last time he did this, he was so... Fantastic! That when the uh, the they one of the Republicans like were were raising shit like almost booing him or whatever, right. and uh, and he looked at him, he looked right at him, and he said, "What? You're you you you're acting like that didn't happen. Do your research. It happened, and they still make noise." And he said, "So what are you telling me? That it's not true?" And they he had them. Yes. And he said, well, I guess you're willing to join me right now. He negotiated yes, an this. agreement on this. Right? Right? And I'm sure that later it fell through or whatever. But of course. that's the kind of shit that he should be using now. They should not that they want to show last year's speech. He'll rely on this year's speech. But shit, man. In some states, <clears throat> there were 19, 20 percent of the votes for, for uncommitted. Which is the protests against Gaza yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Israeli uh, uh, war, and um, and you know in some states it's three or four percent more than it used to be. In other places, it, it skyrocketed. He had Jesus Christ better than twenty percent uncommitted out of Minnesota, and people just think that you know, uh, and he's so fucking old. And what they ought to do is he ought to be looking at the camera and say, "Yeah, I'm old. I'm old." And why is this fuck? Is that your cat? What? Did you hear it? I have a cat and he meows. Yes. Did it? Was it just meowing, or do I? Is there a baby downstairs at my house? Ray, ray, ray. No, I mean, yeah. But 
Yeah, so... What? Yeah, Biden is old as fuck, and it's just like... Just look at the camera and say, I'm old. You know what that means? I know how to handle this stuff. I know everybody. I know these people. I've been through this. Yeah, but... I'm excited. And he just gotta, he's just got to be clear. That, and that's challenging because, you know... Not when it's taped. It ain't challenging by the time you get to t- take 12. Yeah, but, God. They could do an AI and nobody would know. I like the one, did you send me the one of him dancing? All the leaders dancing? Is that you? Yeah. You It was you. That, you mean from like All the leaders like of the world dancing this... Oh, no, it wasn't a year ago. It was months ago. It was not a year no. ago. No. No, I don't think... A I don't year think so. ago. A year ago. That's oh, like whatever. Ago. Oh, posh. Whatever. Posh. Posh. Posh bagosh. Yes. Posh uh, The Oshkosh bagosh. Remember those? Yeah. It, yeah. Oh, it's like with the, Biden is so... Like... He doesn't feel... Feeble it, appearance. He doesn't feel... He doesn't fill anyone with... Uh, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Like it's just like vigor. Oh fuck! It's this old fucker. Fine. Like, I I I was in a brief debate with a with a local friend in Spain the other day, uh, where where he was like, I mean, Trump is the worst, but Jesus Christ, uh, Biden is. Just like it's like you take like your sad old grandpa that you want to. Six sixty four percent of the voting public believes that both candidates are too old yeah, yeah. to run, and nonetheless they are running. And so this is important because now it's not about you know primaries and this and that because Trump is he's got to win one more state. He's got four coming up within a week. Haley apparently dropped out today. I've recorded it, so I haven't haven't seen it yet. She will not. I'm certain she will not be endorsing Trump today. I'm not altogether certain she will ever endorse Trump. But the pressure on her within what is in what is now the MAGA Republican Party, or they could disown her, that would hurt her in four years. She's got to figure out a way to to get to. Uh, uh, but okay, so- she's already said. She, she, so, uh, do you agree that you were wrong before when you said that neither Trump nor Biden would be the nominee? No. No, I'm not ready to say that. Why would I do that months early? Convention's not till July. Don't you know about the fucking magic cheeseburger fucking scenario? Tell me, huh? tell me about the magic cheeseburger fucking scenario. What? He, he cheated that's, magic that's the title for the episode. To death. What? <laughs> They each eat a magic cheeseburger and they both die. Separate. Separate. It's a, it's, it happens to be the same day on the campaign trail. You know, whatever. It's a magic. It could happen. And Tell me it couldn't and happen. Then, and, then, and then who do we have? Let's, let's, you have, let's, you have let's two say, conventions. You, know, you have two conventions. Each of the two conventions has attending the conventions, the delegates. Yes. Almost all the delegates are committed to somebody who's dead. And as a result, the convention is all about where do they go? And if they're pissed at Nikki Haley because she refused to endorse the dead Trump before he died, they won't go to her. They'll go to fucking Tim Scott, you know, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, or who the hell knows? But at the convention, you can be nominated by acclamation. You know, these primaries in the convention is to say, we're going to respect the primary, blah, blah, blah. And if somebody says, I make a motion that Ted Kennedy become the nominee of the Democratic Party against Jimmy Carter, they have to debate it. What a, and then the fun begins. What a crazy chapter in history that would be. Like, like already, uh, they are both the oldest people ever to run for president. <laughs> As Chad Stewart pointed out, that 
they actually beat yes. the oldest record, which which was the, they beat four years ago. With the, with the same <laughs> when two they, assholes. The left John here. Stewart stuff you're sending me is so yes. riveting. He is he's so funny. He good. is a funny, funny man. He's and, he does more with a facial expression than most comedians he, can do with. You know, with gag lines. He's, you know, he's so he's much just, better than, than literally everyone else that tries to do that. Like, yeah. uh, John Oliver is amazing, but he's no John Stewart, and he never will be. No, no, uh, no, no. And well, he's he's it, it, he's his it, own it, man it, in a way. Totally that there's no comparison. Yes, yes, yes. There's really no comparison. Right, but but in terms of in terms of funny, yeah. Or John Stewart is funny almost the whole time he broadcasts. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a, he has a moment here and there of serious talk. John Oliver talks a mile a minute and throws in hilarious things, but he's got a lot of science going on his show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stewart is just funny, funny, funny. Yes. He's just funny. I will I will put that in the latest in the show. He notes. says he says he says, you know, and of course there's a lot of, you know, Name calling going on and immigrants and whatnot, but here's a new one, and he shows a Trump clip saying Hannibal Lecter, you know who he is, that's who they're sending over, and then he shows a picture of Hannibal Lecter, and John Stewart looks at the camera funny and says, but don't we want somebody to eat them? Yeah, no, w w wouldn't it fix the problem if there were cannibals among them? <laughs> So, so, so good. Oh, oh, that's exactly what he said. Cannibals among it's, them. You're right. It's, You're right. It's, it's, it's very, very, uh, very, 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 very good. Uh, oh, yeah, Lord. So, this whole idea of uh, what if your, your death cheeseburger or whatever uh, scenario. Magic cheeseburger Magic cheeseburger scenario. scenario uh, Super. That's the title for this, for sure. Uh, the uh, it's not my idea, man. It, like what? I just subscribe to it, <laughs> man. So, God, if if both of them were 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 taken out, uh, no, 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 man. What a no! There's no. I'm not suggesting anything nefarious. No, 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 no. These are both old men. No. The fact that they have a high risk of both choking, each of them choking on a big old greasy cheeseburger on the same day. The, this, yeah, yeah. This, no, same, same. How it'll be? It'll be? It'll be investigated. It's like it's going to be equivalent to JFK's assassination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of how this guy exactly. There'll be a commission. There'll be a commission. The, you know the the grassy knoll or whatever. Uh, <laughs> that was the that would be the Warren Commission. Sorry. So how old were you in 1963? I was negative uh, fifteen. Negative fifteen, and so you were the you were the fellow who sent me the I did crazy crazy Stephen King book. I did. Of uh, a guy who goes back in time through a hole in in time, yes. which happens to be in, diner. in the back room of a little grocery store, which you diner. can only imagine what that closet looks yes. like, and goes back in time and uh, and spies and investigates Oswald and uh, to check it all out how it all happened. God, uh, I want to I want to read that the, again now. That's so with uh, with 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 spoiler the conclusion which I found abhorrent that it, it was actually Lee Harvey Oswald and Stephen King's belief in that was actually a big fucking surprise for me. I never thought at the end of, I never I don't know. It was a big book, big thick, six hundred some pages, yeah. I think, wasn't it? Was, it, or it, was, it was a big boy, yeah. Um, uh, so you didn't know. I mean, it, it's the way he writes, but uh, it uh, it pissed me off, uh, and I couldn't, I could, I couldn't tell you that I didn't enjoy the book. I read every fucking page of it. So, but how? 
I mean, this is one of the classic conspiracy uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. theories. And... Man, yeah, there were a lot of motives to get him out of the way. But, yeah, I don't know. It it come, it boils down to Occam's razor with me, to me, with like, it's like the simplest explanation is probably the right one. Uh, and the simplest explanation, he was assassinated by a country people unknown. That's the simplest explanation because it, it, nothing about the Oswell. There's there's facts. There's there's findings there that you can't ignore. And so while you may have to uh, uh, you know hypothesize who, whether it's the Cubans or uh, you know whether it's the CIA itself or whether it's the right wing fucking. Nicaraguans. I mean, who the fuck knows? But at the end of the day, that doesn't matter because this, according to Occam's Razor, Occam. the idea Occam. that Occam. it that it that he was assassinated by persons or people unknown. That's the simplest explanation. <sighs> there's no. There's not a question here. You're you're shrugging your shoulders. You're sighing. You're, you got Simple. all this. Uh, you know. Uh, simple. Keep it simple, Sally. I don't want to call you stupid. It would be nasty. It'd be nasty to just out and out say it. <laughs> but you're familiar with the keep it keep it, keep it simple, stupid uh, kiss. Of course, strategy kiss principle. Yes. Very good. Yeah, I, there's another one similar to that. It's a uh, it's a great from uh, the political heyday of uh, Bill Clinton. And Louisiana, and Louisiana Cajun, who put a sign up on his uh, above Clinton's desk that said, "It's about the economy, stupid." Yes. <laughs> the raging Cajun. I swear you've quoted that from different people uh, over the years. But. Oh, I have not. I have not. <laughs> I have not. We've got a record of yes. this stuff. Well, you know, do your research. It's what you get paid for. I told uh, I told I told uh, my my uh, my better half today. I said that I wrote you and said I wanted to go early, and you didn't you didn't even take the time to respond. And I muttered under my breath and I said, I don't know why I pay him to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, she said, what did you say? Exactly. I said I don't. I don't know why I pay him. He gets all the money. Yes, all, all the money from doing this. All the money. And she says, and she says, "What are you saying?" And I said, "Yeah, it's uh, it's probably about forty six cents a month thousands on average. And thousands of yes, forty six cents per month on average, because we had that one donor who." Yeah, you know, it was I don't know what it was five dollars and twenty nine cents. Whatever happened to Stanley, who was driving back and forth from Kansas to uh, Chicago? Was it or, or Kalamazoo to Kansas? No, it was. Def remember him? It was Kansas City. For remember sure. him? <laughs> and yeah, Stanley. He was. <laughs> poor, poor, poor he bastard. Was, he was in recurring episodes. Well, listening to the radio, listening to the radio in his car, and we were on it. I, and yet we were dry. He was driving the car. I don't know. It was, it I can't remember. It was a pickup it. truck, I think. Let's let's be honest. Oh yeah. Well, no, I don't know. I picture an older car with a back seat myself. Like a Subaru. An older car, Subaru. Well, I suppose to you, Subaru would be older. But no, I'm thinking earlier. I had a cross country ride with a dude in a. Uh, like a 1936 Cadillac with big old bulby fenders, you know, in the front and the back. And uh, this dude, this car was completely restored. And he, we cross country, somewhere in the uh, west of Louisiana, all the way to California, he was going. And he heard a different sound in the car and pulled over. And did a little checking, and he said, "The um, 
the radiator is going to go. I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. And he no stopped at a, he was at a parts store and he went over and he bought a radiator and for the next hour and a half, he took the whole front end of the car off, the grill and the, yeah, yeah. this and that, got the radiator, replaced the radiator, put the tubes back in, put it all back together again, and an hour and a half we were on our way. And this little, I remember this neat little tool kit. I remember kind of a canvas bag rather than anything, you know, metal. And uh, he was meticulous. Well, wow. he drove, and uh, I don't think I ever, I don't think he ever let me drive it. I not, I might not have had a license. I had my license revoked. I was put in jail for, I mean, they thought I was, they put my buddy in jail, but they, he gave them my ID. So fucking buddy, he was in jail under my name, and we skipped bail, and um, I had uh, my license revoked for two years, and it wasn't okay, me. I had, got, I had questions. I was a passenger when we got pulled over. He just grabbed my wallet and handed him, and even though we didn't look that much alike, they booked him as me. Okay, it was pretty unfair, but what what, what, he, uh, what, what he, was the he was charge? A, Drunk driving. He was driving. Drunk. Yeah. Uh, and okay. Uh, and you were in jail for how long? I was never in jail. He was in jail under my identity for overnight. Okay. Uh, uh, here's a question. Uh, have you? Uh, have you hitchhiked and uh, what was that like and also have you picked up his hitch hitchhiker um, I hitchhiked all over the country for years I I, I went from uh, New York to Florida Florida to Louisiana Louisiana to California, uh, all through their damn uh, that's, northern. That's literally the whole country. Uh, yes, back over to the Rockies and up into Oregon, where I worked, and then to Washington. I lived in the border, Canadian border. Then I hitchhiked from there all the way back to New York, and then after a while, I went back down to Florida, went back over to New Orleans, ended up in the mountains and my buddy left left in the middle of the fucking Big Sur and I uh, ended up in uh, Oregon uh, where I ended up uh, staying <laughs> so I gotta tell you I got this, these people pick me up hitchhiking and they say you have a place to stay I say no they say well we're cool why don't you stay at our house and I slept on the couch they were in this little sh shacky little house you know yeah and uh, woke up the next day, and we had a great time. We liked each other, you know, and there was music, and he played, and I, you know, I sang and shit like this, but we got to know each other a little bit. And the next day, uh, the woman, uh, remember her name later, um, uh, Teresa, maybe Louisa, she, she said, you know, uh, we've got a shed out back if you want to clean it up. And you can stay out there because it was, you know, it was in the warmer weather in the rain, rainy season. Yeah. And sure enough, there was a tin covered shed big enough for a, it's big. It was pretty big, like a workshop. And uh, I moved all the heavy equipment uh, out of it, put up these uh, curtains that I made out of fucking blankets and shit and uh, made a bed and a table and ended up uh, living back there uh, in their shed. And, uh, and, uh, was, for how long? <laughs> uh, couple months, weeks and weeks, you know, not months, maybe a month, maybe less than a month, but I was looking for work. So, what I do is I'd get up every day and I'd go to the docks and I'd, or, or to the restaurants at the docks is really where I would go because that's where all the fishermen were. And I'd walk up and down the cafe tables and chairs and shit. And ask every captain who was at a table if he needed a puller. And the puller is the name that you give the guy who pulls the 
fish in the back of the boat yeah. with a with a gaff, and uh, all the time, every day, weekend after week after week, they said no. And one day I ran into a guy and he said, "Well, actually, I do." Uh, when are you available? I said, I got all my stuff with me. He said, all right, meet me down at the dock. The name of my boat is this and that. And, um, you know, typical rate, I didn't ask the rate, typical rate was 10%. So 10 pound fish, buck a pound. He gets nine bucks, I get one buck. And I get on this boat that uh, he, his name is Dick. And, um, and uh, he's out with it. There's another boat that he's a partner with because you always go out in boats with in at least pairs if not threes okay. for safety reasons etc and uh, he had a comrade he went with and they kept in radio contact and each were looking for fish and given you know this and that and I worked for him for a long time um, but that shed right was where I was until I literally jumped on the jumped on the boat and there was nothing left in that shed, but because every morning I went down there, I packed all my stuff. Right. I may not come back. I hope I don't. Oh. And uh, I quit that guy after a while. His fucking engine blew up, and the cocksucker left me there with very little food, no income. Cocksucker. Although because we were enlisted in the United States Mar Maritime Naval Fleet. I actually had access to medical care, which was necessary because I was uh, hospitalized once. Uh, I've, I was uh, trying to get off the boat, and the, 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 the level of the dock was low, and in order to get up, I had to boost myself <laughs> with one hand on the dock and one hand on the top of the boat, standing on the on the on the ridge of the boat up high enough that this was just like a one you know a one foot leap yeah, yeah. upwards and as i did the boat went down from a wave and it turned my left shoulder all the way around and i landed on the deck of the boat with my shoulder completely out of place and it did not hurt it was just fucking weird and as soon as i got up i had to wrench it a bit it fucking went back in. Okay. I climbed up gingerly at the top, and I thought, you know, it doesn't really hurt that much. And then suddenly, as I started walking, but I need a doctor. Oh my god! And I walked right to the, you know, urgent care. Got myself all wrapped up and shit. Had to get back in the boat. Had to wait till high tide. I probably hung out at a bar for a while. I had some money, <laughs> but anyway, I ended up quitting him. Jesus. And, uh, and there was a boat I wanted to fish because it was well known for catching 100 fish a day. And the name of the, of the boat was Earl, the Earl Grey. And uh, the skipper was the son of, the, of the, the guy who founded the boat and named the boat, his dad. Yeah. And they lived in uh, eastern Oregon over the mountains and, and farmland. And uh, he was the skipper of Great Proportion, but he was a college-looking dude. Blonde hair, you know, like almost tennis playing clothes, gym shoes, sure. nothing fisherman-y about him. He fucking knew the waters, the ocean. This motherfucker knew it all. And sure enough, we averaged 100 fish every day. That's 1000 bucks for him and fucking 100 bucks for me. <sighs> this is 40, 50 years ago. Yeah. Hundred bucks is it'd be six seven hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know today, but anyway, um, when I when I, I my story is that I I had to get off this other boat and said this guy was never going to come back. He was like he gave up and I'm like well fuck you. So I went down to the dock. I saw the Earl Grey and Earl Grey, the guy's cleaning up at six in the morning every day. I'm there. He's just getting there. I think his name was Robert. He's just getting there, and he's running the boat. He's getting ready to leave in three days or so, but I don't know when he's going to leave. He looks like he could leave right then because the boat's going. He's tacking his lines. Well, what he's doing, he's getting ready for a voyage. He's getting ready to go run down the coast. Every day I go, I say, need a puller? He says, no, I'm all set. Second time, hey, you need a puller? Nope, I'm all set. Third time, hey, you need a puller? No, I'm all set. I said, if you're all set, where is he? Ooh. He said, he'll be here. Good. He said, he'll be here. Good play. I said, I'll be here every morning in case he's not. Fucking A. Take that, Bobby. Next time, 
next time, next time. Finally, I get down there, and it is the day he's leaving, and he looks like he's leaving, and the engine just isn't purring. It's stirring shit up. He's ready to take the lines off and get the fuck out of town. And I said, hey, you need a puller? He said, I sure do. Jump aboard. Yes. And I got on board. (laughs) Dennis the puller. Persistence pays off. One of my first trips out, he teaches me all the shit. I've told you the stories of the big heavy weights and how the lines populate the water at three different levels and how they run up and down on gurneys. Well, one of my jobs, one of my jobs is that when there is a rip or a current in the ocean, you have to notice it by looking at a difference in the color in the water or even a difference in wave pattern in the water because the ocean is full of currents warmer water, colder water, whatever. And you've got to make sure that if there's a current that's going to go crossways with you, you tell the skipper to turn into it and go upstream of it okay? so that all your lures kind of go away from it or or get in front of it either way. And uh, so that's my job. And one time I didn't do it. Oops. And all the fucking shit got tangled up. Oh, no. He had to cut fucking 60 plugs. Each plug's money. ching a ching 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 He said to me, he said, look, these mistakes happen. This one's on me. Everything else from this point forward is on you. Are we clear? Uh, I said, we're clear. Yes. I never did it again. Never had the problem. So. Good. Anyway, Good that's, that, that was my, that all started with the shed. Um, I was going to ask about the that oily, gassy smell we'll, of the shit. Oh, well, well, yeah. We'll we'll get to that another time because. Well, I will tell you this though. Stories. One one hitchhiking story. Stop me if you've heard it before. Where? Okay, stop. I'm in Oklahoma. I'm sorry. Continue. Oh, I'm in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. And uh, get picked up by a state trooper. And he puts me in the back of the car. He asks me all these questions. I answer all the questions. Who I am, blah, 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 where I'm born. Height, weights, filling out all these forms. Yeah. I'm very polite. Got my bag. I'm actually a little little, uh, little hot. <laughs> no. And, um, yeah. And, I don't believe uh, it. And uh, I said, uh, so, officer, I am i wasn't aware that, uh, that it was illegal to hitchhike in Oklahoma. Uh, I, I was not aware of that. He said, oh. He looked over his shoulder and said, oh. Oh, it ain't. It's not illegal to hitchhike. That's not why I, I'm, I, I picked you up. I said, oh. And he said, yeah, the thing is, is one of these guys, like he was hitchhiking out here, and the guy who killed him cut him up in so many pieces, it took us forever to identify him. So now we make sure we know who's out there. So when and if that happens, it uh. won't it won't, it won't. it won't be so hard on us. That's fantastic. But you can go now. Thank you. Wow. We just want to get, yeah, so we can identify the pieces of body later. I had, a, I had an event in the, uh, in the upper, uh, in the rocky regions. I had an event. Uh, where I was overtired in a semi-tractor trailer, it veered off the road, and uh, literally missed my nose by two inches. And I got all, like, shaky and shit, you know, because sure. the, the wind blew me down. And I said, fuck it, it's time to go to bed. I climbed over the railing, went down a little hill. It's grassy, it was kind of warm. And I did what I do. I lay down a tarp that's in my backpack. I take out a bag. I lay on the sleeping bag. I take a bigger tarp. I put that over the top of me so I'm a fucking, you know, I'm, I'm up in between two sure. tarps, no tent. I just boost up so I can breathe well enough, and it's warm in there. And uh, middle of the night, I hear this... <laughs> In this, in this padding. <laughs> yes. And I freeze awake, and I realize I am, in fact, a human fucking tarp burrito. And there is a beast that I picture as a fucking stepping wolf. <laughs> Something from fucking Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was you. It was decades before Game of Thrones. Sure. And as it turns out, there the the next and I I lay there still went away, and the next morning there were fucking cougar tracks, all over the fucking place, all over the fucking place. How? And I did exactly what I was supposed to do. I didn't move a yeah, muscle. Shut the fuck up and be asleep. Yeah, or dead. <laughs> 
How are you still here? <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, I'm here for you. This was meant to be. Here we are. You made up my life. You are the one who makes life worth living. So I added, we added some new tunes to our repertoire. Yes. I'll see if I can uh, remember them. Uh, Soul Train by the, uh, uh, by the uh, not Soul Train, but uh, Soul Shine by the Almond Yes, Brothers. I love that. Uh, uh, and uh, that's uh, going to be a blast. I put a spell on you. Of course. Uh, which uh, I started with the tab bidouin the guitarist picked uh, something with a, 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 a bit of a faster tempo and more of a more of a, a, a painful, anguished kind of vocalizations that I just fucking love. <laughs> since I'm the one who who sings it, yes. and we added that. We added the weight, which we practiced last year. To which I was I sang harmony for uh, every every verse and chorus. That was fun. These guys are so fucking talented. Right. They get it all right, man. They get it all right. We added Ophelia from the band that's coming up. Cripple Creek from the band that's coming up. And, and one of the dudes can play the banjo. Nice. So I, I think we're going to bring that in for Cripple Creek. Bam, 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 bam. A little tickle. With my, with my, juice, with my juice harp. Indeed. So fun, man. Fun, fun, fun. Too much fun. Well, actually, no. Just the right amount. It's actually, it's interesting to see the talent at work with their musical uh, specificity for, you know, bridges and changes and, uh, you know, punctuation. Musical specificity. And they, uh, they do it again and again till they, till they get it right at one point. There was a bridge in uh, one of the songs I was singing, and I said, I said, you know what, guys? I said, I think there's something in that bridge that doesn't sound right to my ear. And the guitar player, who's my son-in-law, so-called, because they're not actually betrothed, he said, that's because I was playing it wrong. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> and, I looked, and I looked at him, and I said, I would never use that language. <laughs> <laughs> he appreciated it, and then he corrected it. They figured it out. It took, it took ten minutes, or maybe five. But well, that's more time than we spent preparing. But I for told this. him that you know I was singing "Hoochie Coochie Man." It's the first time I've ever actually played it with a band that knew exactly how it was supposed to go. Right. And I said, "Doesn't matter to me. I'll sing it any way they want to fucking play it. It's not that complicated." True that. Um, but this version that I printed out, you know, the in the, you know, I got a black cat bone, I got a mojo tooth, yes. which I say I got a mojo tooth. Mm. And I got I got John the Conquer root, which I looked up and it's a it's a well-known, you know, poison, you know, from the Middle Ages <laughs> even, you know. Really? And uh, I, yeah, I got John the Conquer root and I'm going to mess with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and in the version that uh, that printed out for me, the way somebody sang it, they said, I got Johnny Conqueroo, and I'm going to mess with you. And the thing is, is that that makes no sense. Not that it has to. No, no, no. But the fact is, is that the way that I learned it uh, is that it does actually make exactly sense because of the, I got, I got a black, I got all sorts of shit. I got a black cat bone. I got a mojo too. I got I got John the Conqueror. You know, yeah. I don't know. You know, it's like I'm a voodoo I'm, I'm man. Fuck you I'm, up, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's a gypsy woman said to me, you know, boy child. He was born. He was born for good luck. Amen, brother. So I got a. What you got? Oh, I, I, I wondered if I had any good harps over there. I, 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 I replaced two of them. Uh, I've got a bunch of. I'm trying to figure out minor keys and why you know on a on a, on a like a a, a, a 
minor yes that i picked up my d harp and i can make it sound right in the lower end of the harp but if i go higher it sounds off to my ear because it's in a minor and there's a difference between the way they play the minor and the way they play the major and so there's a whole you know easy science for people to understand music which i don't is to what that's the third position the third and position. what so-called and uh there's a different harp you play so i'm trying to learn that and uh because if i sit down to play a tune with a band and they say well it's in g sharp if i don't have that harp i'm not playing you know and it's like did you make that chord up did you make g that sharp, sharp i mean man. did you g sharp that- holy shit and i found the harp for it i got it i bought it it's actually a d flat uh well, you know, although you, yeah, I don't know, there's just a lot. You know, you, you can't spell sharp without harp. Just say it. If you want to be sharp, you use your harp. And then no one's going to carp because you've done the right thing the best that you can because you are, in fact, a harpoon man. Yes. Stan the man. Harpoon man. Harpoon man. Harpoon dagger man. John the Kunkaroo. John Conqueroo. Uh, John the Conqueroo. Go mess. Of course, all we know, John Conqueroo's a hoodlum. I got John Conqueroo. He's going to mess with you. We, right? We don't know who we that know. is. Well, it could Everybody be. Was. Maybe there's a guy who's in the bar who's when he's singing it. His name is John Conqueroo. Or it's not, and he, he thinks it is because he's been drinking and he's, after all, a blues singer. Or maybe it's a. He could Maybe say, it's John John the Kangaroo. Maybe he's Australian. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, 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 not warm. No, not warm. No. Okay. What are you? What are you doing? Whatever. Are you posing? Kangaroo. <laughs> are you? Are you posing? I pose all the time. You are. Are I'm you a poser. taping them? Are you taping this? You, but it's I don't, not. I don't, you don't. I don't tape. No, man. I just pose. Wait, you post in the frame. Let me see if I can do it. See, I would know, but like I flushed your video a while back, so as far as I know. But later I will see it, so don't make faces at me because I will be upset later. Don't make face at you. Oh, I just go to sleep with the fucking nightmares. Look, they call me 50-50. Half of me's in the dark. Half of me's in the light. They call me Two Face. Alrighty. Do you, have, do you have a song to sing us out with, or, or are we done? Hey, I, I, I don't know. Because. Oh. <laughs> you're, you're timing out. You're timing out. Um, hey. No. I. I, I uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, say, I will. I will. I will only say this, and you've heard it. Before. Say something amusing. <laughs> I find you amusing. Oh, where, oh, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You bet another end. You was gone. Good evening, my friend. Okay, that's it for episode number 210. You can find the show notes at happyhour.fm slash 210, where you can find links to this John the Conquer Root and the John Stewart thing and other things. Uh, you can support the show at patreon.com slash happy hour. We would love your support. And maybe see you next week. 